welcome back for another pre-Valentine's Day episode of Porn Brain Rewire, the podcast with me, Dr. Trish Lee. I'm super glad to have you back today so that we can discuss porn use and fidelity. How does porn disrupt your relationship and why are you engaging in porn or infidelity? And this conversation um, here for us today comes on the heels of a discussion with someone about why they're unfaithful. And it really has stuck with me as we approach um, Valentine's Day. So, hey friend, if you're listening, and let's talk about porn, fidelity, infidelity, and relationships. So number one, what we're going to do is kind of frame the idea of fidelity. That's our introduction for the day. Then I would like to dig into what's going to be our number one bullet for the day, emotional maturity and emotional regulation, which will lead us to number two, neurological maturity and neurological regulation, which will in fact lead us to number three, which is your brain hack strategy for the day on how you can build more self-awareness around porn use or infidelity and move yourself in the direction that you choose. So stay with me until the end because that's going to be an important brain hack strategy for the day. But before we dig in, I just want to remind you that this podcast is an outreach of my work to help as many people be able to realize the impact of porn use on their life. And I want to be able to pay it forward and to be able to go upstream to younger people who are just being exposed to porn and to help them never get in this negative feedback loop, downward spiral of porn use and all the negative impact it can have. So if you want to join me on that mission, please go over to pornbrainprevention.org. It's a nonprofit organization that I have founded and funded, and I would love for you to join with me in funding it so that we can bring programs to young people so they never get hooked in the first place. All right, so let's dig into fidelity. This was interesting for me, and I almost got uh, caught in a click hole of continuing to go down the definitions. Um, so just to remind you, I've been married for 22 years. We're moving into our 22nd anniversary in March. So the idea of marriage and faithfulness and fidelity, especially after a long time, it's important as a lifestyle. And many people are choosing that lifestyle and have for a long time. Other people are choosing not to have that lifestyle. So I'm not endorsing one or the other because I'd be lying if I told you that it didn't cross my mind how hard marriage is and maybe a non-marriage lifestyle would actually be a lot easier. But of course, the benefits of being with the hubs, because we've taken every opportunity to make our relationship better and better and better over 22 years, which don't get me wrong, it wasn't all roses, sunshine, and unicorn, unicorns. It was some downs, some pitfalls, some valleys before we hit the next mountain. That's what I want for you in your life, whether you choose to do it in a relationship or not. But Point being there is fidelity is not always the easiest thing, but if you want it, you have to work for it. So the definition of fidelity is a quality or state of being loyal and faithful. So it's loyalty and faithfulness towards another person. So then, of course, the question is, what does faithful mean? Faithful, is the definition is remaining loyal or steadfast. And this now we're digging a little bit deeper when we get to 22 years of marriage. What does steadfast mean? Steadfast means that it's when you're firm in your belief, your determination, and your adherence. Now, we know that there's three stages to love. There's the lust phase at the beginning where it's all sex and you can't stand being apart and it is all roses and sunshine and unicorns because you're just so excited to be together and there's this really strong pull chemically and that pull is more dopamine but then once you start to have kind of a deeper attraction for each other now you're moving not only from dopamine but to lower levels of dopamine and now more serotonin joy and happiness and you know this might be after a couple months this might be after a couple years this might be after a decade or you know it might be we're turned right on the on the wedding night hopefully not but what you should be getting out of your more attached relationship 
more attracted relationship is a deeper love and intimacy that's not just built on physical uh, chemistry, it's more the joy of life together. And you know what this might look like is you get to sit next to your person at night and you know, give, give a side eye and burst into laughter for no reason. Hopefully that's what you have going on. That's what we have going on. Then you get to the, to the third phase of love, which is attachment or pair bonding. And it's very important evolutionarily because we're stronger in families. That's why human beings are kind of pulled toward being in a family unit. We're stronger in pairs, we're stronger in families, we're stronger in tribes than we were if we were out by ourselves in the woods. It still applies, even though most of us aren't in the woods. We need connection. We need intimacy to have a full life. Isolation can be very difficult. So many people are looking to move through these three phases. And the third phase comes with those valleys and those hardships because you have to choose each other over and over and over again. You have to remain steadfast. You have to stay firm in your belief, in your determination, in your adherence to the connection in your relationship. And that's why I said I'd be lying if I didn't have nights where I'm like, dang, am I going to deal with that man again tomorrow? Maybe, maybe now is just the time to transition into friendship. <laughs> and then, of course, I'm like, no way, man. That dude's my best friend. We have the best time together. Thankfully, there's still the attraction and there's still the lust piece there for us also. But in the difficult times, it gets hard to see that. So what I want you to know is these phases, they move from one to the other to the other. That's how it works. So you move through lust to attraction, but you should pull the lust forward. Then you move forward from attraction to attachment and you pull the attraction and the lust forward with you. Now, if you can't do that, we need to think. And that's what we're going to do in the next two sections. Because if you move out of lust and now you're not in attraction phase, you've got a problem. If you move out of attraction and you're not in attachment, you have a problem. And really to have a well-rounded relationship, it is important to have all three of those things. That's what we call the happiness trifecta healthy lower levels albeit of dopamine then there's levels of serotonin and oxytocin for connection happiness trifecta and most people want it so let's think about then why is porn in the mix if that's not inherently what you want and why would infidelity or cheating be in the mix if you inherently want that and it's probably uh, partially because it's difficult to move through those three phases, but we'll discuss it. So we're going to move next to emotional maturity and emotional regulation. And this is going to answer the question, why do you cheat? So if you're unfaithful, this is why. Is that likely you don't have the emotional maturity in the communication skills to be able to really reflect on your relationship and which pieces aren't working for you and then be able to move forward and discuss that with your partner. This isn't working for me. So we need to, we need to discuss this. That's a minor reason. The major reason is emotional regulation is that when things get tough, you've taught your brain to go to sex to feel better. Your brain isn't taught to go to sex for intimacy and connection. It's taught to go to lust to feel good fast with high levels of dopamine, not to go to phase two, which is that attraction and deeper connection or phase three, which is attachment and pair bonding where you're in this, but you're in it and you're communicating well about it, not in it, missing some of the pieces that you need, but not having the emotional maturity to discuss it and to get your needs, your healthy needs fulfilled. So healthy needs, that's going to lead us to something else in a second. But I just want to follow up with the idea that it's difficult to, to talk about challenging issues. It's difficult to figure out what you need and to stand firm in it. And especially if you're going against seemingly your partner in crime. 
and I've had to learn this and honestly I'm constantly practicing it I you know I would don't even want to tell you that I'm I'm perfect at it but I do it every time I have to and I just said it to the hubs again because I'm thinking like maybe we might have to move but that's a different topic but I said to him like we need to discuss this and he doesn't want to discuss it and I'm like you need to show up in this conversation with me so when you're ready to show up in this conversation let me know and I'm gonna have to feel this out but that's emotional maturity I need to discuss something I'm not hammering him I'm trying to get him to show up and to be able to communicate about it, to be able to go through the pros and the cons, to be able to sort it out, and to be able to make a decision together. So it's a process, and we, we're different people. I get that. So I can be a healthy communicator and say, I need to talk to you about something. When would that be good for you? I don't nail him with stuff when he's not up for it. I don't make him talk to me about things he can't handle yet. But I do tell him this is a non-negotiable. So we are definitely going to need to talk about this. And this might be your sex life. So you might need to say, you know, our sex life is feeling off to me. I would like to talk with you about it. When can we do that? And we're going to discuss this in the brain hack. But emotional maturity is spending enough time by yourself to know what you need. Then you have to discern, is that a healthy need or an unhealthy need? So if you're going to porn or if you're cheating on your partner, that's an unhealthy need that you're self-soothing because you're not able to be your authentic self. So instead, you stay in a, a chronic stressful state. And it's not necessarily your partner's problem. This isn't your, par your partner's fault. This is your thing to deal with. You're not showing up in the world as the person you want to be. And that then creates internal conflict that is difficult to regulate. So you go to something external. And this conflict may have been in you for a very long time prior to your partner. Most people who consume porn, they found porn when they were in adolescence. They used it as their mood emotional regulation tool to feel good because of whatever challenges were happening at that point in their life. They pulled that tool forward into adulthood and that's how they're still making themselves feel good about whatever problems that they have in their life. Yes, the problems changed because now you're 40, not 14, but the one tool remained the same. So let's segue that to thinking about emotional maturity and neurological maturity. So we'll segue, this will be our bridge into number two, is that Emotional maturity is the ability to develop new tools. So when you become an adult, your new tool is open, transparent communication with discernment. You talk to your partner about the things that you're feeling on the inside. Your partner should literally be your partner in crime. Meaning that is your go-to person who's got your back. And we're moving through this life together in families and tribes to have each other's back. But if your partner doesn't know about a lot of things in your life, how could they possibly have your back? Because you're keeping them at arm's length. So just even from an evolutionary, evolutionary standpoint, that's counterintuitive to keep half your team in the dark. But if you're keeping half your team in the dark, because you don't want to show your authentic self out of fear, then now you've got this inauthentic self who needs to be self-soothed. And that's where the communication in the relationship comes in. So there is another reason too when it comes to emotional maturity and emotional regulation, and it has to do with validation of yourself. So when you're healthy and you're neurologically mature and you're emotionally mature, you learn to validate yourself from within. You have internal self-regulation skills, which then allows you to be able to emotionally regulate yourself by yourself internally. And it comes from the healthy brain pattern, neurological regulation. So if your brain uses the green zone, optimal brain pattern, 
now you can check in with yourself, see what you need and get that need fulfilled through communication and through changing your own behavior and going to get what you need to feel safe, secure, so you're no longer in survival mode and you can get into thrive mode. But you have to have your team on your side or you're always in conflict. That's where the communication piece comes in. So if you're being neurologically mature and if you have strong neurological regulation, which allows you to self-regulate from inside and emotionally regulate, there's no need to self-soothe and there's no need to get those emotional regulation needs met externally. So the conversation I was having with the client is, why are you unfaithful? And the answer is, because I need people to want me. I want you to want me. Remember that song? Yeah, sorry about the singing yet again, but it's so true. I want you to want me. I need you to need me. I won't keep singing. Go check it out. It's a great song. But, all right, I have to go for it. If I can't hit the higher notes, the next line is, I'd love you to love me. So there is a piece of emotionally immature people with low neurological and emotional regulation skills that needs to be validated externally. So you go to something else to make you feel good. And especially if you're unfaithful, you're going to another person to make you feel wanted to make you feel needed and to make you feel loved. But guess what? It doesn't last because it's artificial. It's based on lust and dopamine. It's not based on serotonin in attraction and it's not based on oxytocin in attachment. And of course, there's a caveat, unless you're not getting those things in your primary relationship and they need to be explored and resolved because sometimes people stray to look for a relationship that they can get to the three phases because they're stunted in the relationship that they're in. And many times, if a partner is caught in a relationship that has to do with infidelity, that partner will bounce and go look for a relationship that has the three phases. Once they get, whether they know the language around it, that they're in a relationship with a neurologically and emotionally dysregulated person who does not have the emotional maturity to show up in their relationship as an adult. Because what adults do is they figure that stuff out. They don't just go get their needs met in an unhealthy way from another person. They engage in the process, exploring and resolving the dynamics in the relationship, the dynamics in the internal self. That's the work we're talking about today. So let's go on to what are the brain patterns, neurological maturity, neurological regulation. What, excuse me, what do those brain patterns look like? Okay, so neurological maturity. We already said that you develop the tool of masturbation to porn or checking everybody out or serial dating when you were younger. And the reason likely is mood regulation and external validation. You need people to want you, to need you, to love you because you're not internally validating yourself and likely your brain's not in the position to be able to do that. But here's what I want you to chew on and we know this from science is that what happens when you find porn and you engage in those behaviors is it literally stunts the development in your brain. It keeps your brain in that immature brain pattern. And then if you keep using it and using it and using it, it actually creates a lot of strain in the system because your brain wanted to develop all the way to the age of 25. Brains develop all the way to the age of 25. But if you develop a porn habit when you're 14, now your brain didn't develop the way it would have minus porn from 14 to 25. Instead, it developed going back to its one tool for emotional regulation, meaning you didn't learn how to develop all the healthy tools for emotional regulation and maturity. Stunted brain development equals stunted emotional maturity and regulation development. They are a two-sided street. That's why I'm here. That's why I care. That's why I'm trying to bring my skills and abilities to be able to help you because I know this 
and I know how to help your brain develop in the right direction. So the idea is your brain got locked in that pattern that goes back to porn for high levels of lusting dopamine and probably hasn't been able to move through phase two and three in love. Now it's pre-Valentine's Day. So this is why I want you to know your brain is probably stuck in strained brain because it's been using that immature brain pattern for a really long time. You're using too much fast energy, too much slow energy. You're not able to engage in the self-regulation and the emotional regulation and maturity because your brain is stuck. So unless you unstick your brain, you're going to continue to go back to porn or cheating or web sex, anything like that, to feel good, needed, wanted, and loved, and to emotionally regulate stress and perceive boredom, which is actually lack of overstimulation. Hopefully you're with me because we're, we got a lot of parts spinning today. We got a lot of plates going here. But the goal is when you train your brain and you rewire your brain, now those emotional regulation skills are easier for you, but you need to know what to do. That's what I offer in my 90 day program. I teach you how to train your brain. You purchase the brain training headband. I teach you how to, how to train your brain using it with no additional cost within the program. And I give you all those tools to help you move through a process of increased self-regulation, brain regulation, emotional regulation, and increasing your ability to be emotionally mature. Now you can do all the things that were difficult for you because of this synergy. So if you need help, go over to drtrishlee.com, get into the 90 day program under Porn Brain Rewire, and let's get started moving you in the right direction of all of this stuff. It works if you work it, it really, really does. Okay, so if you don't wanna do that, let's move to number three, your brain hack strategy for the day. Your brain hack strategy is this, recognize you're using porn or any sexual media or cheating with other people, you're using it as a self-soothing emotional regulation technique that is very immature. So you're trying to dump as much dopamine into your brain as humanly possible to help you feel better about whatever issues you have that are going on in your life. Now, the pull back to porn is definitely part of the problem, the pull back to the excessive dopamine. But even a layer down more further down than that is the problems that you actually have are calling you to solve them so that you stop being that inauthentic self and you start being the healthier, more authentic version. So today, get out your journal, get out your pleather journal and your fancy pen, spend a few minutes in your sanctuary thinking about what is the biggest conflict you have in your life right now that's not resolved because likely that needs your attention to explore and resolve. If you are in, if you're cheating or if you're worried about being caught watching porn, it's so interesting what it does to your brain too. The more self-awareness and the more emotionally mature you are, the more it will weigh on you. The less self-aware and the less mature, it might not even hit your nervous system. So the goal here is get quiet with yourself and think to yourself, what do you want? Does porn, does a, a other relationship, infidelity, does it lead you toward what you want or does it lead you away? And this really is an important conversation. I would contend porn never leads you to what you want. It's always a self-soothing mechanism. Most relationships are between two emotionally unhealthy people. They're toxic because an emotionally healthy person couldn't cheat on their partner. They would go have the conversation and they would not stay in the relationship. That's what an emotionally healthy person would do. So if you're with a person who could be with you knowing you're cheating, that person has to have some level of emotional immaturity. It just is what it is. Because if a person finds out you're married and they immediately won't talk to you anymore, that's an emotionally healthy person. They don't wanna be in a trio because they know that's toxic dynamics and it's emotionally immature. So if you're in a relationship with a person who's waiting for you to leave, and I have a lot of experience with this, 
you're two emotionally unhealthy people. There's definitely room for you to grow, but you need to get quiet and think about what do I really want? And then you focus back on your relationship and you think, okay, do I need to explore and resolve some issues within my relationship? We all do. Every last one of us in a relationship. And that's, that's the point. But you have to have the gumption and the courage to go, can I talk to you about our sex life? Can I talk to you about how much time we spend together? Whatever the thing might be. Can I talk to you about how you micromanage me? And it shouldn't have blame or shame. It needs to be an emotionally healthy conversation. But here's the point. Start talking to your partner. So it's your opportunity moving into Valentine's Day here in the States to choose it. See why you're doing it. Look under the layers. It has to do with what we've talked about here today. Then start peeling the layers back. Figure out what you need. Figure out how to communicate it. Communicate your needs to your partner. And if you are in an extramarital affair and you decide it's not for you, that's when you have to have the courage to say, this isn't what I'm looking for. I want to double down on what I have going in my relationship. And the person that I talked to, I love it. You know what he said? The grass isn't always greener. It's greener where you water it. So if you're watering both lawns, they're both going to be half brown, half green. But now if you decide which one of these you want and you put full water onto that lawn, you decide you want your relationship and you're being unfaithful for that external validation, then you start communicating with your partner and you start watering it. Man, is that thing going to grow lush. All right, I hope this helps you out. So get into your journal, figure out what you need and start communicating it to your partner. Engaging in the difficult conversation is what you're practicing as your brain hack today. Start small. It doesn't have to be about infidelity. It doesn't have to be about sex. Just start talking about something you wouldn't have talked about before. Start practicing with eye contact, compassion, and getting to be on the same page. All right, I hope this helps you out. And until next time, control your brain or it'll control you. I'll see you then.